Welcome back to our 2022 year in review, where we sit down with some of the top guests from 2022 and catch up, see where they have gone since our sit down interview, but see where their organization has gone as well. And for our second episode, we wanted to bring back one of our top 10 episodes, and that is Save Nose Creek with the founder of the organization, Andrew Ewell. Andrew, welcome back to the show, and thank you so much for sitting down and chatting about the last six months since we chatted in July. For sure. Thanks, Chris. I, I'm, I'm happy to be back and happy to hear we've got lots of Creek heads listening to your show. Well, I'm so happy that they're listening as well. So we last left off uh, in July, mid, but I think it was July, possibly and beginning of August when we released the episode where the planning and development organization of Calgary was going to be looking at the zoning requirements for Nose Creek, which is uh, for those who are watching the photo that's behind Andrew right now. So Take us through the last six months from July to December. How has it gone for the organization and the Save Nose Creek uh, pitch to Calgary Council? Yeah, it's been uh, it's been a roller coaster ride of uh, of learnings, um, and uh, I, I I was trying to recount all the things we've done in the last half a year of of advocacy, and it's like I'm I've just like tons of hours of, of engagement with uh, developers and with city council and with municipalities uh, and watershed specialists and biodiversity specialists and his, his history specialists it's been um it's been quite 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 a ride and um so lot like I, I i was listening to to the episode just to kind of remember what we were talking about and lots lots has changed i guess like um, our goals um, have kind of been finalized of, of of what we're trying to do as an advocacy group, and and our and our primary goal um, right now is to uh, get a park designation, uh, whether that's a national urban park or a uh, provincial park uh, through the Nose Creek Valley. Uh, that's our that's our top goal. That's that's the 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 thing that we we would like the most for the Nose Creek. Um, and then uh, to get there, though, that we've learned, we got to get, we got to, we got to talk with the municipalities. Um, and so, so our secondary goal is, is working with the municipalities to vision cast this park that we want through the the, the Nose Creek Valley, as well as as working on creek protections um, throughout all the the municipalities. Um, everybody's doing something a little bit different, and so uh, it's it's trying to bridge bridge that gap as well and uh and then our final goal is just uh what we're doing right here is is uh give give nose creek a voice um uh we, we like to say speak for nose creek uh like we we have to be um uh, voicing the the concerns uh, of of nose creek to to all levels of government to all parties involved all stakeholders and um and and that's that's in four four categories of advocacy, and that's biodiversity, watershed, history, and just the the general green space and naturalization of of, of um, Alberta. Now, there's a lot of things that we left uh, sort of upended in our last interview, and one of them was the uh, zoning requirements. Now you made a present. I don't think you actually made the presentation because communications was a key issue around that planning and development meeting where there was not really that much communications besides the big giant sign that was on the property that uh, sort of is across the way from where we're looking at the photo right now. Um, uh, and you were looking at potentially seeing a setback, an increased setback if the development, the zoning changes weren't going through. How did that go? How did that uh, first planning and development earlier this uh, summer or early in the summer, do you remember it? Yeah, it was, so I went to council and uh, we we presented our case. Uh, it, was a, it was a land use change. And we failed hard, Chris. We failed hard. 
<laughs> How so? Because I, I remember seeing some of this because I, I went through your social media feed before the interview and I was like, wow, he uh, he has some words that he has, wants to say, I think. Well, I mean, it was a learning experience. It was our first um, kind of foray into um, city council. Um, and it, it was a good, great, great learning experience. Um, the so what was what was trying to be done um there was there was a a land use change for about nine different properties around the district area in north calgary north central calgary and i think it was about three of those properties were our most uh um we had our most concerns about because they were right along the nose creek and so what we were trying to do is um again like i said before we're not trying to be anti-development we're just trying to be trying to find a middle ground of 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 where like how can we how can we influence what's going in uh, as a development and the land use change they were um trying to make for all nine par- properties um was to make it uh, to add some commercial um uh, uh, abilities in in those properties and um, and so some of those those uses were a little bit concerning um, like food food joints like uh, fast food and um, anything that was like we, we were we were concerned about anything that that could have things that end up in the creek um, uh, because the, the creek is already not in great health as we talked about before um, so what we were trying to do is is definitely have a reconsideration for the three uh, closest. We didn't care about some of the stuff up on the block on the bluffs because like that that's far enough away. There's already development up there, uh, but we were just focused on um, the the three closest to the creek, and um, ultimately uh, didn't didn't really get any support um, uh, from council on that. However, I guess the one bright spot of of going to council was it, it got us in front of council it gave us it gave us kind of a platform to um, introduce ourselves to many of those counselors uh, we'd, we'd been trying to uh, email and and mail uh, before that and uh, but this was the first time and, and it, it generally produced some um, some good results in that we got counselors uh, emailing us afterwards and, and wanting to discuss things further is uh, I think a lot of counselors um, um, were learning for the first time in that council uh, meeting that they have powers to influence the setbacks that in Calgary uh, and and make legislation to um, to to protect the creek and 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 change the setbacks if they, if if they so desired. So that was also good um, kind of coming out of that. So. While it was a it was a, a failure in in some some eyes, uh, I, I we pulled a lot out of out of that failure that we could we could run with. So, oh, I'm, I'm I can't hear you. There we go. It would help if I unmute myself after I cough, but that's the great thing about doing these live to air. Um, yeah. Most people, Andrew, would walk away after they fail. They'd say, okay, the writing's on the wall. Council's made their decision. Yes, they're emailing us, but they've made their decision at council. But you're not most people. <laughs> you <laughs> decided that you were going to keep grinding this uh, uh, this uh, advocacy away over the last few months. And I've seen you go at it. You've been out at events you've been raising hell on social media uh, uh, not hell but you are making it a key priority for people to hear you have been tagging counselors and the mlas to say go to these events and talk about uh, nose creek what made you want to continue on because most people like i said would have just stopped after the first hurdle and council saying no what made the desire to keep going at it uh, I guess I'm not smart enough to know that I was defeated. Um, <laughs> I, 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 so it's, it's really, I, 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 it's like that, that burr under the saddle or the, the rock in your shoe. Like what I've been telling people is this has been an, an accidental education in Creek um, uh, knowledge that um, I like, it's, it's uncomfortable to sit with, um, uh, everything that I've learned and uh, and how we're moving forward 
Um, and so I like I have to I have to speak for nose Greek because um, because of what I've learned. And I think I think that's really important uh, lesson. And, you know, I've got three kids and I'm um, I'm sh <laughs> I'm showing them, um, you know, you just keep keep trucking. And I mean, like I, I've said before, there's there's a there's an end date for this uh, this advocacy. It's either going to work or it's not. Uh, and I think we'll just continue to push through and 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 uh, see what influence we can have. And and we uh, like uh, I'm sure we'll talk about it soon uh, within this interview. But like we we've had some recent successes that um, that have come through all these um, all this hard work. Um, so so I'm I'm excited to share that as well. Um, let's talk about that because uh, you have had meetings with the uh, mayor of Airdrie, if I'm not mistaken, and a counselor. I saw that uh, you are meeting with counselors here in Calgary as well. You said that after that first meeting that you went to in uh, uh, Calgary, where they actually started emailing you afterwards to talk to you. Um, and now you recently just went back to council and this is a little bit more updated, but uh, in the last few days from this recording, but from airing a few weeks, um, you went back to council and you asked for them to actually get administration on board and look at a feasibility study for the Nose Creek uh, area. Um, how's that going? Because I can imagine that that is a task in itself, because I think you were there for about 12 hours, if I'm not mistaken, or a long period of time waiting for your time to talk. It was... That was that was another <laughs> learning experience. Uh, it, it was it was great. I mean, um, it, the budget, the the Calgary budget, um, is is what's been happening this week, and um, and so yeah, I I, I went in at uh, nine thirty, and I and I knew I was going to be one of the later panels. Um, I just and I was good. I took the day off. I was going to experience the whole whole shebang and. Uh, and and it was great. It was great to to kind of network with some of the some of the other um, advocacy groups in Calgary, um, um, uh, the Climate Hub and and um, the uh, the Alliance, uh, uh, the, the Calgary Alliance. Uh, uh, it's 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 good to see advocacy in Calgary, and I and I and so I enjoyed myself, even though it was a twelve. Yeah, I was one of the I was the last panel. Um, <laughs> on Tuesday. Uh, so I, I, I got there at 9.30 a.m. and I, I spoke at 9.30 p.m. Uh, and and that just goes to show like the the counselors that we have here in Calgary are are, are grinding this out and, and all power to them. That's that's a long day uh, to listen to all these people. And, um, and so, yeah, it, I guess uh, you, leading to that, yeah, we've had lots of meetings with some of these counselors. Um, we've talked Behind the scenes with with my counselor um, Jasmine Meehan. Um sh she offered uh, ahead of these budget meetings. She offered a uh, a drop in engagement session at the library in the in the neighborhood. Uh, so I went there um, ahead of this, and and we kind of we 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 looked at the requests that we had, and the three requests we were looking for from but uh, from this budget cycle was uh, the first request was to. Um, get get Calgary on the list of um, of urban national national urban parks. Um, the Liberal government right now has a a plan to have 15 urban national parks um, by 2030, and uh, right now Edmonton's on the list, uh, and and so they're they're in pre feasibility study, and Calgary it wasn't on Calgary's radar, and so. Um, so that was our, our number one request uh, this week um, was let's let's get administration some some budget to start investigating that with the federal government and 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 get uh, get Calgary on that list and get Nose Creek on that list. That's that's our 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 main goal is we want uh, a national urban park um, from from Calgary to Airdrie. Um, it, it the the creek is 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 prime both like with the historical value of it to 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 just the the biodiversity and, and watershed like there's there's so much um of a, a of a case to make for for nose creek to be an, an urban national park and so that was our number one request uh our second request was we have been talking with municipalities like uh the mayor of airdrie um which <laughs> that was an interesting he invited me for lunch uh out at out in airdrie um 
Mr. Mike's. He pulled up. He pulled up on his motorcycle. I mean, that's 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 pretty pretty kick ass as a <laughs> as a mayor pulls up on his motorcycle. And uh, he was probably a very... didn't expect him when he got off the motorcycle, took off his helmet. You go, wait, that's who I'm meeting. <laughs> that's who I'm meeting. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and so that was a. Uh, it was a very interesting meeting um uh, being that you know how how um how i've been kind of grinding away here in calgary having having the mayor mayor of airdrie just kind of invite me for lunch and 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 uh he's he's uh he's a he's one that just kind of shoots from the hip and uh and and tells you what what's on his mind and so, so that was a that was a, a great experience he brought with him uh their their representative to the nose creek watershed partnership uh clint goodman um, and we just kind of uh, talked about what what we were trying to do, and um, they were very intrigued. Uh, and Airdrie is an interesting uh, case study. I mean, so Nose Creek, we're dealing with three different municipalities. We've got Airdrie, Rocky View County, and Calgary. And uh, Airdrie, um, I've I've always kind of said, le has led the way with Nose Creek. They've got a museum um, dedicated to Nose Creek. And the, the we're talking with um, the watershed partnership. Um, they they are using uh, an additive setback, and so we talked we talked last time about um, how Nose Creek has a hundred foot setback um, uh, all like all across the partnership. It's thirty meters, a hundred a hundred feet. Um, that's kind of what the watershed partnership has agreed upon. Uh, but Airdrie is kind of going that step above. They, they, uh, their newer communities north of Airdrie. Uh, there's a community called Williamstown, and they are using an additive setback um, formula um, in addition to that 30 meters. And so they're also taking into consideration the meander width and the floodplain. And so they have right next to Williamstown is uh, Nose Creek Preserve, um, and just right next to this development and so so that's kind of like our, our our gold standard in in setbacks and so um like there's there's the broad stroke like 30 meters but there there is more science to it that you should be looking at a, a full formula and that, so that, so that was interesting learning that from from um from from airdrie uh from mayor there, brown there. Or Mayor Brown, yeah. So he was very he was very intrigued about what, what we're trying to do. And like like I said before, they're also looking at the um the bike path into Calgary. Um and so he was very intrigued by this idea of a, a urban national park because that kind of coincides with their their project. So um so he's he actually pushed forward and, and is is um uh has got me a meeting with the Calgary metropolitan uh region board um in february uh, oh, wow. i'm going to be making a presentation to to all the municipalities um in in that in that board so so that that was a very intriguing um kind of <laughs> meeting so so you you grind away in, in some places and all of a sudden you you hit you hit gold and and you, you start running with that so so that's that's uh that's kind of led to to these um uh, these requests that we had so so our second request this week with the budget was like uh let's give administration here in calgary um more budget to to work with the municipalities and 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 see if there's a feasibility study that they can work with rocky view and with airdrie on on uh vision casting this this park that we're we're discussing and then and then our final request um this week was to um uh, to because when we started this um a lot more a lot more people started raising their voices about their areas so um ricardo ranch um and uh, nathaniel schmidt uh has been kind of uh, leading the charge down south with Le ricardo ranch um so we wanted to we wanted to kind of uh, reach all quadrants of calgary and so with our last request uh with this budget was uh, over this four-year budget cycle, let's let's as Calgary commit to creating uh, naturalized parks in each quadrant of the city, um, and and so um, watching the budget deliberations this week, it's um, the parks side of the budget I think is lacking. 
and and there's definitely projects that could be um, uh, amplified and um, and so that was what we were pushing for and so today like so the day we're recording this um, Jasmine Mian my counselor um, did did mention as she was talking to administration administration confirmed that Calgary is not in the running for a um, urban national park and so she's going to actually um, uh, work on a notice of motion for the next council meeting uh, to bring that forward. So that was um, our first success. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's taken, it's taken, you know, five, six months here uh, from failure to success. Um, we're, I mean, it's a small nugget, like we'll, 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 we'll see where this heads, but it's, uh, it's been a long, a long road. Um. Looking back on 2022, the last 12 months, because the last time we talked at the beginning of the year, you were just like this small little guy who didn't really know what he was doing in the realm of government pitching and government advocacy. And here you are now influencing the direction of what your counselor is putting a motion forward, uh, talking to the mayor of Airdrie, going in front of the Calgary Regional uh, uh, Municipal Board in uh, February of 2023. How has your 2022 been? Like, I can imagine this has been a whirlwind for you. <laughs> It's been, it's been interesting, and, and, and like it's been, um, yeah, it's been exhausting. I mean, my 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 creek life balance is is still something I'm trying to get to to get a hold of because when when somebody is interested, we got to jump on it. Like, um, it, it, you can be it. It's the 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 cycle of the news. Like, um, you could be like three interviews in one week and then just for three weeks not have anything and so anytime um somebody wants to talk about the creek i take it so so like i've been um <laughs> we we got pulled um into something called pekka kucha yyc i don't know if you've heard of that it's uh it's a group that um they it you have you have a 10 10 speakers and you have 20 seconds uh, you have 20 slides for your presentation and 20 seconds per slide and it just goes automatically and so um so we were asked to to speak at that and it and it was part of the beakerhead um the beakerhead uh festival here in calgary uh the science festival and um so we we, we jumped at the chance to talk about um, um creek stuff and so we went to tell a spark and and gave a a, a talk on on nose creek um and people like um, Jay Ingram, he was he he was he's a part of Beagerhead, and he um, used to be the host of Daily Planet on Discovery Canada. Uh, he was very like people that are more sciencey than me <laughs> was were were blown away by the knowledge that I had about creeks, and so um, that was that was that was a really neat thing. And it's just like I've had um, I've had uh, politicians like like. Uh, Michelle Rempel Garner, who's who's up here in the North Central Calgary, who's very intrigued about what, what we're trying to do, and um, we've had um, interest from um, just all, all all over the place. And like I, even even to like journalism students at SATE um, are 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 wanting to do stories on us, and and so it's like anytime I I get that that opportunity to kind of share this knowledge, it's that that burr under the saddle. I gotta I gotta. I got to give more people um, that uncomfortable feeling that we we've, we've got to do something about this creek. Looking back on the last twelve months, though, what's been the highlight? What's the one moment you can say, okay, this is the moment that I knew something was the, that things were actually progressing in the right way? Is it the motion that Councillor Meehan is putting forward, or is there another moment in time that you can look back and say, okay, you know what? I think we've got something here and I think we're in the right direction because now more people are actually talking. Well, I think uh, it's it's actually interesting, but the one thing at our first council meeting where we were kind of uh, stonewalled, uh, one of the big, um, the big question marks that, that people have is there's, there's so much private developer land in this, in this Valley. Um, and, and the, the comment was like these developers, like, they're going to do what they want with this land. Um, you can't tell them to build a park there. Um, so, so out of that meeting, I I called the developer 
<laughs> and ask for a meeting with the developer. And um, and so we uh, we went down to the land, and, um, and they were very very uh, generous with their time and um, and talk talked to me about their plans for the land. And they act. I think I think um, what was intriguing about that meeting, what what kind of like coming out of a failure of a of a council meeting and talking to these developers is like they 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 had some good advice for me and like part of that advice was like um some of this developments um like you know it's it's too far gone i'm not i'm not going to be able to to change some of these developments but the ones that are further north and and as we're going northward um his comment to me was you've got you've got to tell um the city of calgary to follow their own rules because uh in development there's 10 percent of their of the development has to be green space um, but in Calgary, you can pay money in lieu of that 10%. And if if I can force the city of Calgary to follow their own rules, maybe we can push that 10% to the creek side and 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 build this 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 green belt from 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 Calgary to Airdrie that that could be justified uh, to become a, an urban national park. So I think it was that that kind of like, I've, I've still got something here. Like I still, <laughs> it was like coming yeah. off a of failure to like, there's, there's a nugget of something there that I can keep, keep pulling on. So I, I have to ask because we talked about it a little bit in our last interview, but did you talk to him about, I'm just looking for my Peter Lockheed. I'm just looking for my one counselor who has the political will to say, sorry, developer, you're not going to get what you want. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm, with I'm respect, still, I'm assuming. <laughs> I, I am still looking for that champion, and I mean, tomorrow I actually have a a meeting with um, Rajan Sani, uh, my my MLA, um, and and that's that's also like I mean the the political landscape in, in the province has kind of been topsy turvy this whole time, <laughs> the last five months. So what? so. <laughs> so I haven't been able to to really connect with her yet um but but like you, with with everything that's going on provincially yeah you, like we we could have um uh, somebody just kind of come in and 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 make this their project that we we've we've now kind of like teased the 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 um the interest of the municipalities um and it's just about it, and it's still just trying to pull these people together to, to start talking about it um and I, and I think we can get somewhere I think um I, I think based on like nobody has 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 shown me like this the the case that this is impossible <laughs> as soon as somebody says hey this is why this isn't going to work you should stop doing what you're doing um nobody's done that and so, so I'm I'm going to continue to to move forward. I'm going to continue to to push on some of these. Uh, like, uh, I want one of these things. Um, like, st we're still concerned about how close those three properties are to the, the creek, and um, we're learning about like uh, some of the some of those three properties are grandfathered, fifteen meter setbacks. Um, and so it's like that's not even that's not even following the rule. So we have asterisks now in our in our policy. It's like not that doesn't that like doesn't the, sit well. It's like the Major League Baseball Hall of Fame. All the yeah. asterisks that are yeah. there. Wow. Yeah. If then, but so I, 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 I feel like we just got to keep pushing. I think one of the things, um, like, like talking with the Watershed Partnership, that's that's something they they were so and I'm all over the place right now, but I'm going to keep going with it. Um, <laughs> the, 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 the pushback I got from some of the municipalities is like, show me the science on the setback thing. Um, and, and so I'm, that's, that's really what I'm, I've been working on with the watershed partnership and, and learning about this additive setback idea is we don't have the best, so the, the best guideline. We have a we have a broad stroke that you know one size fits most um, for for the setback, but we don't have the best science um, for the setback, which is this additive formula that they would used up in 
in the Williamstown um, Nose Creek Preserve. So uh, I want to I want to kind of uh, push push back on on the municipalities and 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 I, I guess there when they when I when I bring that up, you know, the thirty meters is still better than the province. Um, the province is only six meters, and so um, so that's my I guess uh, as I talk with the the provincial reps like uh, like Rajan Sani. I'm going to bring that up is like um we need we need to we need to we need to to work on our provincial plans because they're not up to snuff when it comes to the science as well so so yeah i i i'm really i'm I'm really trying to make this um I'm, this case that everybody should feel like they've got a rock in their shoe about this nose creek because we've we've ignored we've ignored the issues for too long and now we've got to we've got to bring it all together and, and and bring bring something out of it. Are people coming to the cause? Are people joining the cause? Because last time we talked, you said there was a small group of people who were involved. But since we last talked, have you seen that small group grow into a small handful or uh, like a, a medium group? Like, how has the recruitment of volunteers and people who are willing to advocate alongside you coming along as well? You know, I'm always looking for volunteers. Um, we uh, we are still a, a small, scrappy group. That said, the small group that we have snagged is pretty is pretty um, pretty good. Um, one of one They're of the gun ho about it. <laughs> well, the one the one we we just recently caught um, Bev Sandalak is uh, a a professor at U of C. And she uh, does urban uh, design, uh, and 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 has students that she wants to um, in this winter session. She wants her students to work on the Nose Creek. Um, so so that's 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 pretty exciting to to me. Is like I'm just this <laughs> I'm just this pot stirrer from Twitter, um, and I've got this who UFC really professor. hates magpies. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm the magpie. I like magpies. Oh, I'm, sorry. Who really loves magpies? I I, yeah, magpies and cowboy so hats. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm I'm all about the magpies, but but no, yeah. It's when you when you talk to these people who who have the the um the education behind them, and they're saying, yeah, you're you're doing the right thing. Um, <laughs> even though I. I'm I'm just kind of you know making it up as I go here. Um, it's it's great to get that confirmation from from professors and and like the Jay Ingrams of the world that that are saying you're doing a really good job. And and so it's like, well, I better keep going. I don't. <laughs> so what does keep going mean? So we're we're coming to the end of 2022 here. 2023 is a whole new gambit. It's a whole new ball game. What does uh, uh, Andrew Yule, the founder of Save Nose Creek, look like in 2023? What does the organization, what does the group look like in 2023? What are you? Pl- what are the plans? So that way, when I come talk to you in 2023 in December, I go, "Did you do all these plans?" Oh man, you're, you're setting my goals for me. That's. Um, <laughs> I, I guess one of the one of the things that we do need to do. Um, uh, uh, is uh, start a preservation society, um, and and that's something I'm I, like, it's on my it's on my vision board. Um, um, it was actually suggested to me by by Jeremy Farkas. I know we talked about uh, him last time. Um, he's been he's been very helpful in, in giving me kind of his his uh, view of 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 you know Calgary City Council, um, how how best to approach council on things like this. And uh, his, his advice was like, you guys need to start um, a preservation society. And uh, that way you can, you can, you can use your numbers, use your membership as, as um, kind of like a force for what, what you need to, you know, when you present things to council, you can say, you've got this many members um, of, of the preservation society that are behind you on this so that's that's definitely something, and I'm I, we've um, uh, so we we and we also now have a website uh, savenosecreek.com, so you can sign up for updates um, on on that as well. It will be and, linked in the show notes. Thank you, and, <laughs> and and so we're we're looking for people who are interested in this stuff. I mean, I I've been spending 
I've been spending a lot of time on this creek and uh, it would be nice to to have um, some of that that weight lifted off me. I mean, when you're when you're thinking of like we have these four ma major areas, biodiversity, watershed, history and green space. Each one of those advocacy has like a number of organizations that we need to be approaching and talking with. And it's like uh, we need more people. So um, definitely, if you're if you're interested in, in volunteering uh, for Save Nose Creek, I'd, I'd love to hear from you. And um, uh, wherever your your skill sets fit, I'd, I'd, I'd love to get you on board. Um, we we look back and this is the whole series is looking back on 2022. Um, you've had some highs and some lows and uh, looking back, like if you could put yourself on January 1st, 2022 and know what you know now, could you imagine being where you are right now with the changes you've made, the uh, presentations you've given, the amount of advocacy you've done, the amount of time, effort, and I say effort because only you would find a way to take a plane ride to a conference and film a creek while taking off. And I went, I, I literally for a brief moment, I thought, did he literally just buy a ticket to film the creek while it was taking off? That went through my head when I saw that at first. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. looking back on the last uh, 12 months for yourself and knowing what you know now, are you happy where you are going into 2023? I'm, I'm very like, yeah, these, these last, this last week has been very encouraging. Um, Getting getting some headway at, at city council um, has been really encouraging, but I, I think um, yeah, it's been I, I've been lucky to have a, an employer that's that's uh, been very supportive of, of the cause that I'm doing. Um, it, like I, uh, my my employer has has uh, um, twenty hours of volunteer time that we can use during during work hours. I've used all 20 of them um, and, and, and like so much more <laughs> outside of that. Um, it, I, I, I just, when, when I was kind of going over my notes of like, what have, what have I done over the last thing? Like it's been close to, to 40 or, or 50 hours of just presentation time um, in the last, in the last five, six months here. Um, so it's, it's been, it's been very interesting. It's been like, I, I never thought I would, I would have this much, much interest. I thought it would be, you know, I have like 150 followers on Twitter that, that are rooting for me and it'd be just kind of like something that floats in the background, but, but the interest that's taken off. And, and I think like, I, I'm, I'm proud that just to, to see other, other um, uh, people like Nathaniel Schmidt taking on Ricardo Ranch. I feel, feel like we, we've, we've started something wetlands, uh, in Calgary are are dwindling and um, and we need to we need to really I think it was a stat from Wetlands um, International that said 40 percent of the world's biodiversity is in eight percent of like the land mass of, of the world and and that's wetlands and like um, and so the more we push our wetlands outside of of our cities that uh, you know, in this climate emergency age, we need to to really, really think about how we how we can keep the biodiversity, the watershed, uh, the green space, um, just to to keep this planet, you know, healthy. My last question to you, Andrew, before we wrap up, is this: What else do you want people to know? Because you talked about the wins that you're making, the progress that you're making. What haven't we talked about that you really want to hammer home with the listeners who are listening to this or the viewers? Um, I would love for them to to visit. Um, Nose Creek is is uh, pretty amazing. I mean, it's um, like you. We're seeing our followers post pictures of the wildlife, of the deer, of the of the coyotes, of mink. Uh, like it, it is until you step foot down in the Nose Creek Valley, like it's you don't even know that it's there here in Calgary. Like it's a it's a whole nother world. I mean, you know, everybody's uh, 
everybody gets excited about the mountains and 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 all these other features that Alberta has, but our wetlands, like we've got we've got um, salamanders, like we've got we've got lizards in 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 in, in Calgary. Who knew? Uh, but uh, unless you go down there and unless you actually look for your own eyes, like um, we've got a pretty uh, amazing creek in, in Calgary. And, and uh, despite its health, um, it's it's still lively with with activity. So um, I'd love for people to come visit. If you want a tour, I'm happy to give them. Um, and uh, it, it's it's worth it's worth it to come have a look. Andrew, um, this is the point of time when I'm about to talk to you personally, and I want to say thank you. Um, oh, I appreciate it. Um, people who've listened to the show know that I've been going through some health issues right now, and the uh, prognosis is not good. Um, and I want to say from the bottom of my heart, the two times that you've sat down with me, the tour that you gave me... Um, the communications back and forth, whether through uh, friend, friendly uh, ribbing on Twitter. Um, thank you. Um, yeah. You have uh, lightened up my year. And uh, who who knew that I would bond over a creek with somebody in 2022? But here we are. Um, so right. from the bottom of my heart, uh, I wish you the best in 2023. I wish you all the best in 2023. I can't wait to see what happens in 2023 with Save Nose Creek. And I look forward to having another lively discussion with you sometime next year when you get some great news about what's going on in the world. So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for sitting down tonight and uh, chatting with me about Save Nose Creek and the year of 2022 about it. Yeah, and and Chris, um, we're gonna need to to have you come out again in, in uh, twenty twenty three and and go for another hike. We'll uh, we'll go at you know a little 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 uh, slower pace next and time. And not but, right after a radiation treatment. What? Yeah, you know, you live and learn. Hey, you you live and learn how much the body can handle in one day. Um, but thank you so much, Andrew, for sitting down with me today. Uh, like I said, the links to Andrew's, uh, to the Save Nose Creek website, to the social media pages are all in the show notes. Highly recommend you check them out if you're not following them. Even for the really old our newspaper articles that you go, wow, this is not an issue that has gone away over the years. But here we are in 2022, still talking about a creek. So with that, I want to thank everyone for tuning in. This has been another special edition of the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown's 2022 in review. View. Have yourself an excellent day. And remember, everyone, keep talking. 